Let's go, let's go, let's go. Periscope, what's up? Good morning, good morning, good morning. High energy, Friday. Friday morning. We're ready for the weekend. God bless you, God bless you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Got your coffee going today. Got your coffee going. Doing breakfast, fasting, what are you doing? Halfway through January. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You're fasting, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release hearts. So just keep tap, tap, tapping away. Thank you so much. Thank you. Go to that little man in the lower right hand corner and invite some people to come on the broadcast with you. Yeah, thank you so much. God bless you. You're having a green smoothie. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, all right, all right. Hang in there for just a second. I'll be right back. Okay. I forgot to close the door. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, good morning. God bless you guys. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. Friday, high energy. Finishing the week strong. Finishing the week strong. Getting some stuff done today. Yeah, God bless you guys. God bless you. It's great to be with you today. I'm glad that you are on the broadcast. Thank you so much. And uh, we're just going to continue today with, with some things that we've been talking about uh, during this week. And we'll just add a few things on to finish the week off. And so if you're taking notes, just get something out where you can write some things down. And uh, we're just going to go for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Good morning. So we've been talking about a, being a world shaker. And uh, we've been seeing that being a world shaker means that you have something that is of sufficient importance that will affect the whole world. And so we want to just keep work on that, keep moving in that, recognizing that we are people who uh, see the brokenness of the world and we know the brokenness of the world and we have an answer. We have a solution. So I want to tell you today that you are a solutionist. You are a solutionist. And as a world shaker, you are being built. So you approach your life as a continuous construction project. A continuous construction project. You're like the man in Matthew chapter 7 that is building his house on the rock. The rains come. That's trouble. And then the floods come. That's demonic attack. And then the winds come. That's ideologies and philosophies of this age. All of these things are coming and beating against your house. They're beating against your life. But as you build your house on the word of God, as you recognize that you're in a constant construction project, you will withstand all of these onslaughts of, of life and the enemy, and you will overcome. So I declare to you today that you are an overcomer. I believe that. I feel that today. You are an overcomer. You're overcoming the pressure that is coming on you today. You're overcoming the, the attacks of the enemy that have been uh, bumping up against you all week long. You're, you're overcoming uh, some of the trouble that has come into your life the last week or so. You're overcoming relational issues, financial issues. You're overcoming uh, arguments uh, that have been raised up in your mind against the knowledge of God. You are overcoming 
everything that stands against the will of God in your life. And you are victorious. You are strong and mighty. You are moving today with clarity. You're moving today with clear vision. You're moving today with a high level of faith and strength in your life. This is a day of victory and breakthrough for you. Some of you have been seeking God for an answer. You've been seeking God for a solution to an issue that you're dealing with right now. And today is that day. In fact, right now is the time where creative, innovative ideas break through into your mindset. Even while I'm talking to you right now, the power of the Holy Spirit is moving in your life to release those creative ideas, to release those innovative ideas. Revelation that we've been talking about all week, it's coming to you now. It's powerful and it's mighty in your life right now in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the glory of kings to search it out. And so I speak to you today as a king. You are seeing with the eyes of a king. You are hearing with the ears of a king. You are understanding with the heart of a king. You are thinking with the mind of a king. You are making decisions with the ability of a king. And you are speaking with the mouth of a king. You are decreeing a thing. And it is so in Jesus' name. So as a king, you have the right, you have the authority to seek out a matter. And once you have found that matter, once you have sought it out, and that revelation comes to you, it then belongs to you. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children Forever. So the revelation that's coming into your life, even in this moment, the revelation that's coming to you right now, the answers that are coming, the solutions that are coming to you right now, they now belong to you and they belong to your children. It's happening now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we want to move in that place of consecration and be transformed in that place of seeking God and drawing close to him and believing him for his greatness to be manifested in our lives. We want that in a powerful, powerful way. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel that in Jesus' name. I hope you feel it too. So in order to have revelation moving in your life, you have to be able to see. So today I want to challenge you to get your spiritual eyes open and begin to see. And usually you're going, to, you're going to see pictures that God gives you to see. And those pictures are meant to stimulate your faith. It's like when you are uh, thinking about getting a new automobile. So you might get the picture of a 2016 silver Mercedes S600 sedan. And you see that price sticker, $170,000. And, and so you're looking at that and you're considering it and, and it's moving around inside of you. You're looking at that 2016 black Cadillac Escalade and you're considering, you're considering that that vehicle that might be yours, and you can see it. And as you drive down the road, you start seeing that Escalade everywhere you go. You start seeing that Mercedes everywhere you go. You've got to see something to work revelation in your life. That's why God told Abraham, get out of your tent, Abraham. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky and see the stars in the sky. I want you to see the stars, and I want you to count them. See, God was telling Abraham, you need to see this because in seeing it, it's going to stimulate your faith. He told Joshua, you need to see Jericho as a city that's already defeated. The walls are still standing, but I want you to see the walls down. The king is still on his throne, but I want you to see the king removed from his throne. The mighty men are still on the walls of the city, but I want you to see those soldiers removed from the walls. See it as if it's already happened. That's why Jesus gave us pictures to consider the kingdom of God. He would say things like, the kingdom of God is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is like leaven. It's like a treasure hidden in the field. It's like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. It's like a dragnet casting through the sea, gathering up every kind of fish. 
He was giving us pictures to see so that our faith would be stimulated. This is not New Age visual, visualization, but this is your point of reference dealing with the power of the Word of God. The Word of God becomes your point of reference. So what is it that God has promised you? And now you begin to see it. And then there's an element of knowing something. This is also involved with revelation knowledge. Knowing something, that's the truth. Your word is truth. That's John 17, 17. And so we move into the word of God believing that it is the truth. And we gain knowledge from the word. We gain knowledge from our upbringing. We gain knowledge from our educational pursuits. We gain knowledge from life experience. And we gain knowledge by revelation. And even as I was telling you yesterday, there's usually a uh, cluster of revelation within a revelation. So once you get a revelation, it's going to open up other facets of revelation to your life. So what is it that you're believing today? What is it that you value? Those are the precepts that you're working with. And God's going to use those precepts to bring revelation into your life and cause it to work powerfully in your life. Then there is your practice, what you do. So that's the training in the how. This is where wisdom comes in. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. So now you're looking at what shall I do? What is my course of action? And that is where revelation kicks in and it begins to reveal the heart and mind of God to you about your next steps. And I believe right now that God is revealing your next steps. Is begin to ask him out of a sincere heart, what's the next thing? What's next? What's next? What's next? What do I do next? And the God of Revelation is going to reveal it. He's going to show it to you. And then there's the, the component of your, your patience. And this is the why. It, it takes you into maturity. It takes you into a higher level of understanding. And so you're, you're seeing the vision now and you realize that you may be required to wait for the fulfillment of that vision. So in Habakkuk chapter 2, where the scripture says, write the vision, make it plain so that he may run who reads it, uh, the scripture goes on to say, though that vision tarries, you have to wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So the vision for your business, the vision for your project, the vision for your, your ministry, the vision for your production, the vision that you're seeking God for, it may be tarrying, but I declare to you it's coming now. It's coming soon. It's coming suddenly. That's how revelation comes. Revelation usually comes suddenly. It comes suddenly on your life. And it's not like you have to go get a revelation Usually it's the fact that revelation comes to you. Revelation comes to us as we wait in the presence of God. So wait on the Lord today. Seek after him with all of your heart. Believe him and trust him to release that place of revelation into your life. And I believe it's happening now. Those creative ideas are forming in you now. Those innovative thoughts are forming in you now. The strategy is coming to you now. It's coming in Jesus' name. This is a day of revelation for you. I'm telling you, you're going to have a breakthrough in the realm of your thoughts. You're going to have a breakthrough in the realm of your planning. You're going to have a breakthrough in, in knowing what the next step is. You're not going to struggle with it anymore. No more wrestling. No more grappling with this thing. You're going to know what it is. That next step is right in front of you right now. The next thing is right there. God is showing it to you. So receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. I appreciate you. I love you. I'm so thankful that you're on the broadcast with me today and that you've been on the broadcast with me all week long. Thank you so much. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you have a great day today. Be productive today, working in that revelation knowledge. Have a great weekend. Get to church this Sunday. It's going to be a powerful day in the house of God. We're speaking to the snow and commanding it to move in Jesus' name. We're speaking to the cold temps and we're commanding them to go in Jesus' name. That's for all you people in Chicago. Come on, exercise your authority. We don't want to be hindered about coming to the house of God this Sunday. 
So we're going to push, push all that polar air up north where it belongs, send it back to Canada, send it back to the north country, and let's be free to move in worship this weekend, to come to the house of God together with the saints, to receive everything that God has for us. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Have a great day. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's with us everywhere we go.